After years of watching game dev YouTubers, you decide it is time to create your first game. Everything went smoothly, until you had to fill in the argument with data type, Quaternion. You heard this word somewhere, between top-down movement tutorial and 26 Unity game jam. You google it up. How can I possibly understand this? The short answer is, you can't, but you don't have to. In the documentation, you can read qu that quaternions are ordered set of four numbers that don't suffer from gimbal lock, and even Unity admits that are not easy to understand. You may feel discouraged. However, there is a glimmer of hope. In most cases, you won't need to modify individual quaternion components. Instead, you will typically take an existing rotation and use it to construct a new one. According to Unity, the quaternion functions that you use 99% of the time are quaternion look rotation, quaternion angle, Euler, slurp, front rotation, and identity. Personally, I would also add angle axis. Once you are familiar with the concept, I will demonstrate each one of these important functions with examples of how to use them. The simplest one is the identity rotation, which means no rotation at all. It just aligns with the world or parent. In the game I'm working on, I use it as the rotation of spawning ships, as I want them to always face down, as facing down is their default orientation. It is very similar in use to identity, but remember, when you retrieve, modify and reapply rotations, you can make your game look like this. So never use them to modify existing rotation. Instead, only use them to set a new one. A good example of usage is in my top-down movement tutorial. I use them to make the player always face the direction of which is moving by getting the angle of the desired movement and setting the Euler Z axis to it. First things first, in the majority of cases you will be probably just fine using transform.lookat. But when it's necessary, quaternion look rotation is the way of doing the same things I do using trigonometry, meaning it's also much easier to do in 3D games. As the first argument you put the vector, which is the direction you want to look at, and as the second, the vector which represents where up is. I imagine in most cases it would be vector free up. I don't have any good 3D projects, so here is a simple demo. It is straightforward and doesn't need further explanation. Extremely easy to understand, it just returns the angle between two rotations. To be honest, I only use the vector version of it, but I can imagine using it to check if two objects are looking at each other. But I will probably just use faircasters. Think about it as storing the rotation rather than just an angle value. To achieve this, you feed these functions two directions, stored as vectors, and you get the rotation between them. I can't think of a good reason why you would use it in a 2D game, so let's dive into a specific example in 3D environment. We have a world, and we want to align a cube to one of its faces. We begin by right casting from bottom of the cube and obtaining a vector perpendicular to the hit point. Then using quaternion front rotation, we can create a rotation that ensures that the object aligns perfectly with the face it intersects. I can't understand why nerds from ET Docs skip this one. Maybe I am retarded, but I use it quite often. It is used to rotate by x amount of degrees along the given axis. For example, when the axis given is vector free forward, object will only rotate along the z-plane. My most recent use case was when I created multiple lasers for my spaceship. First, I get the starting angle, in this case it's minus 30 degrees, and in the for loop, I increment it by 30 degrees two times. This way I can easily modify the number of lasers and the angle between them. Spherically interpolates between quaternions A and B by ratio T. The parameter T is clamped to the range 0 to 1. But what does it mean? All previous rotations were sharp. The slurp function is the solution. When T is approaching 1, the value is getting closer to B. T can be whatever you want, but most likely it would be the time passed since the start divided by the time needed for full rotation. I remember using it many times, but I can't find a good example. So I coded quickly a little diamond that constantly rotates towards the square. I set the delay to 2 seconds, so it always takes this amount of time to rotate from the current position to the new one.
I hope these examples had helped you understand the basic concept of rotation in Unity and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will try to respond as soon as possible. This was Unity Forge and thank you for watching.